Job 19. Job then spoke up and said, Until when will you sadden my spirit and crush me with words? These ten times you have humiliated me. Are you not ashamed of acting like strangers toward me? Even if I have erred, my error lodges within me. Although you try to overwhelm me by reproving me with disgrace, know that God has wronged me, for he has encircled me with his net. In truth, were I to protest against unfairness, I would not be answered. Were I to plead, there would be no justice. He has fenced in my way, and I cannot pass. He has set darkness upon my pathway. He has stripped my honor from me and removed the crown of my head. He has smashed me from all sides, and I have gone away. He has uprooted my hope like a tree. He has kindled his anger against me and regarded me like his foes. Together, his legions advance. They pave their way toward me and encamp around my tent. He alienated my brothers from me. Those who knew me estranged themselves from me. My close ones stay away. My friends have forgotten me. Those who live in my house and my maidservants regard me as a stranger. I have become an alien in their eyes. I call out to my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is repulsive to my wife. I must ingratiate myself to my offspring. Even the youth despise me. When I rise, they talk about me. All my confidants detest me. Those I loved have turned against me. My bones cling to my skin and flesh. I have escaped with the skin of my teeth. Pity me, pity me, O oh you, my friends, for the hand of God has afflicted me. Why do you pursue me as does God? Have you not been sated with my flesh? If only my words would be written down, if only they would be inscribed in a book with an iron stylus and lead engraved forever on rock. But I know that my Redeemer lives and that he will be the final one remaining upon the earth. After my skin was stricken, they pierced me with this bombast. And I see the judgment of God from my flesh. I see it for myself. My eyes have seen it, and not a stranger's. My kidneys have been destroyed within me. Perhaps you should say, why do we beleaguer him? What is the root of the matter within me? You should fear the sword, for wrath against sin brings the sword. That you may know that there is punishment. Job 20 Zophar the Namathite then spoke up and said, Therefore my thoughts compel me to answer, because my silence is within me. I have been listening to insulting reproofs, and the spirit of my understanding prods me to answer. Do you know everything since time began, from when Adam was placed on the earth? For the exultation of the wicked is but recent. The happiness of the hypocrite lasts but a moment. Though his eminence ascends to heaven and his head touches the clouds, he will perish forever like his own dung. Those who had seen him will ask, Where is he? He will fly away like a dream, and they will not find him. He will be hustled away like a nighttime vision. The eye that beheld him will not see him again. The people of his place will not observe him again. His children must appease the poor, and his hands must make restitution for his robbery. His power filled his youth, but it will all lie with him in the dirt. When an evil idea becomes sweet in his mouth, he hides it under his tongue. He will cherish it, never abandoning it. He will keep it inside his palate, but his food will twist in his innards. The bitter venom of asps is inside him. He devoured wealth, but will disgorge it. God will purge it from his gut. He will suck the poison of asps. A cobra's tongue will kill him. He will not see the streams, the rivers, the brooks of honey and cream. He returns his victim's toil and does not swallow it. In exchange for his dishonest wealth, he will have no exultation. Because he smashed the poor and laid them waste. He has stolen a house, but he did not build it. Because he never knew tranquility in his stomach, he will not escape with his desire. There was nothing left of his food. Therefore, he will not achieve his prosperity. After his satiety has been gained, misfortune will strike him. The hand of all the weary will overtake him. 
God will dispatch his burning wrath against him. It will fill his stomach. He will shower his warfare upon him. He may flee from weapons of iron, but a bow of brass will pierce him. He has drawn his weapon. It leaves its sheath. The flash of its bitter terror overwhelms him with fright. Total darkness lies in wait for his hidden treasures. An unfanned fire will consume him. Misfortune will befall the survivor in his tent. The heavens will reveal his sin. The land will rise up against him. The produce of his house will be exiled, swept away on the day of his anger. This is the wicked man's portion from God and the legacy assigned him by God. Job 21. Then Job spoke up and said, Listen carefully to my word, and let this be your consolation for me. Bear with me, and I will speak. After I have spoken, you may mock. Is my complaint directed to a man? So why should I not be impatient? Turn your attention to me and be astonished. Set your hand on your mouth. When I recall this matter, I am confounded. Trembling grips my flesh. Why do the wicked live, become powerful, and even amass fortunes? Their offspring are well established before them, with them, and their descendants are before their eyes. Their homes are peaceful, safe from fear. The rod of God is not against them. His bull impregnates without fail. His cow gives birth and does not miscarry. They send out their young ones, carefree as sheep. Their children prance about. They raise their voices like a drum and a harp. They rejoice at the sound of the flute. They spend their days with good fortune, and they descend to the grave in a moment. They said to God, Go away from us. We have no desire to know your ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? What will we gain if we pray to Him? Behold, is not their good fortune in their hand? Yet the counsel of the wicked was far from me. How long? But the lamp of the wicked shall die out, and their downfall come upon them. May God apportion their due in his anger. May they be like straw before the wind and like chafe snatched by a tempest. Should God store away his affliction for his children? Let him pay it to him himself, that he should know his punishment. Let his own eyes see his ruination, and let him drink of the Almighty's wrath. For what is his interest in his household after he dies, when the number of his months have been cut off? Can one teach knowledge to God, he who judges the lofty? One person dies in unimpaired perfection, completely peaceful and serene, his breasts full of milk and the marrow of his bones moist, while someone else dies with a bitter soul, not having tasted good fortune. Together they will lie in the dirt, and maggots will cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts, the schemes that you wrongfully plot. For you say, Where is the house of this generous one? Where is the tent of the wicked people's dwellings? Did you not inquire of wayfarers? Do not ignore their testimonies. For evil is withheld until the day of calamity, until the day when sinners are brought to face God's fury. Who is it that can be told to his face about God's ways, about all he has done, about the one who will requite his deeds? He is brought to the grave and lies forever upon a mound of dirt. The clumps of dirt in the valley become sweet to him. All men are drawn after him and before him without number. How can you console me with meaningless words? Your responses remain a betrayal. Job 22 Eliphaz the Temanite then spoke up and said, Does man benefit God when he learns wisdom from people? Does the Almighty care if you are right? Or does he gain if you perfect your ways? Would fear of you make him contend with you? Or enter into judgment with you? Is your evil not great? And is there no end to your sins? For you exacted collateral from your brethren without due cause and stripped off the garments of the ill-clad. You did not give drinking water to the exhausted, and you withheld bread from the hungry. Should the land belong to a strong-armed man, or should prestigious people settle in it? You drove away widows empty-handed and crushed the arms of orphans. Therefore, you are surrounded by snares, and sudden fear confounds you. 
Perhaps you cannot see in darkness, or a torrent of water covers you, that you say, Is not God in the heights of the heavens? You look to the tops of the stars, which are lofty, and you say, What does God know? Can he judge through thick cloud? The clouds block him so he cannot see. He walks about in the heavenly orbit. Will you keep the traditional path? Where walked men of falsehood who were cut down before their time, whose foundation was swept away by a river, who said to God, Go away from us. And what can God do to them? Yet it was he who filled their houses with bounty. But the counsel of the wicked is far from me. Let the righteous see this and rejoice. Let the innocent man scoff at them. Has not their stature been destroyed and their pride consumed by fire? Learn now to go with him, and you will stay whole. Through these words, goodness will come to you. Accept guidance, if you will, from his mouth, and place his utterances in your heart. If you would return to the Almighty, you would be built up. If you would drive iniquity from your tent, then you would have a stronghold on the earth, and no fear gold among the rocks of the brooks. Your stronghold would be powerful, and you would have an abundance of money. Then you would delight in the Almighty, and you would raise your face to God. You would entreat Him, and He would hear you, and you would fulfill your vows. You would utter a decree, and it would be done, and light would shine upon your ways. When people are downtrodden, you would say, Arise, and He will save those with downcast eyes. Those who are not innocent will be saved through the pureness of your hands.